Hello, children. So you are all so lucky that at your doorsteps you have a chance to learn the practicals. So Deshya Vidya Shala Samiti welcomes you to the second year PUC Biology Practicals. Well, this is our entrance of DVSPU Independent College. Well, children, you all get set to learn your practicals through the video classes. I am Shruti Ramaswamy. Well, I am supposed to teach you something about practical number three, study of gametogenesis in mammalian testes and ovary. Let me first introduce you as to how you are going to get the question in your practical exam. Well, your question goes like this. It will be the fourth question, identify D by giving two reasons. So wherein the scheme of valuation will be so that one mark is awarded for your identification of the slide and then two marks for any two comments. So we have mentioned two comments, but children, don't limit it only for two. You write five, we select whichever two we want, okay? The aim of the studies is to study the discrete stages of gametogenesis in mammalian testes and ovary. And for this, the requirements are the permanent slides. See, permanent slides. It would be of testis and ovary, the transverse section of it. Then a compound microscope. Here is lens cleaning fluid and then there would be the paper to clean the lens. Anyhow, this part of the work will be done by the most important people for the biology practicals. That's the team. One Mr. Ganesh and then Mr. Nagaraj and then the lecturers here. Okay? See, let us first know the histology of this mammalian testis. Children, you have learned all these in your theory classes. But the same you need to know here also, and then you will be reporting it. Well, the testes represent a pair of the male gonads. They have dual functions to perform. At the very outset, it helps in producing and releasing the male sex cells, which are said to be the spermatozoa. Each testis will be surrounded by a thick, fibrous, vascularized connective tissue capsule which is said to be tunica albuginea. This encloses a matrix or you can also say it is interstitium. This interstitium encloses numerous minute microscopic structural and functional tubules called the seminiferous tubules. Well children, which are the structural and functional units of a testis? It's nothing but seminiferous tubules. Okay. Next, the wall of each of this tubule, it is made up of mitotically active germinal epithelial cells. It's said to be the spermatogonial cell, which divide and differentiate into the haploid male sex cells called the spermatozoa. For support and the nutrition of these cells, there are the sertoli cells. They are also present in the lining of the seminiferous tubules, but they are big in their size and slightly irregular also. The second function performed by the testis is that it begins to act as an endocrine gland, wherein it secretes the male sex hormones called androgens. See children, this is a diagrammatic view with the labeling that has been given over here. What you are observing are the seminiferous tubules. They are the functional structures inside the testis. So in between the seminiferous tubules, there is presence of interstitial cells. They are also said to be the Leydig cells. 
these interstitial cells they secrete the hormone called the testosterone which you can also say androgen now looking into the seminiferous tubules here the seminiferous tubule is lined up by two varieties of the cells one it is spermatogonial cell or you can say it is germinal epithelium the other cell which is here very irregular and bigger in its shape is the nourishing cell and that is sertoli cell however this seminiferous tubule needs to be protected and the protection is being given by the fibrous connective tissue which you call it to be tunica albuginea whenever we come across the term tunica it says it's covering albu it says it is white so this is how the diagrammatic representation is given now see i have a slide here this is a permanent slide anyhow i had told you we would be using this lens cleaner and then the lens cleaning paper so with the help of this the lens is neatly cleaned over here and then during your examination see during your regular practicals you have the slide with the labeling but during your examination you can't expect the same wherein we use this slide cover we do not allow the labeling of the slide to get exposed well you're all well trained as to how the microscope is supposed to be used so first we focus it for the light then we check whether the low power objective is notched then we see we place this particular slide over the aperture then from outside we just move this body of the microscope slowly raising it we focus this at a particular point it's clear see we can use this fine adjustment screw accordingly to have a clear picture of the slide now how is it appearing just see we have taken a pic picture and it is projected over here the slide that has been focused appears so what you are seeing here are the seminiferous tubules okay the bigger cells for nourishment they are the sertoli cells in between the seminiferous tubules in the interstitial space there are leydig cells so they release the hormones androgens then what you are observing here as a lining apart from the sertoli cells there would be germinal epithelium also are you seeing there is a small space here and some thread like structures so they are nothing but the spermatozoa you can find them adhered to the sertoli cell wherein they are drawing the nourishment once they are totally nourished they just get released from the sertoli cell and this process is said to be the spermiation okay so this is how the histology of the testes is seen under a light microscope and that we are using here is a compound microscope well children the next part of the same practicals is to study the transverse section of the mammalian ovary the histology of the mammalian ovary depicts that ovaries are present in a pair then they too serve two functions they help in the production of the female sex cells called the ova each ovary is surrounded by a thick fibrous vascularized connective tissue capsule called tunica albuginea do you remember 
even while explaining the transfer section of the testis, I had told you the connective tissue capsule that covers over there is tunica albuginea. So this tunica albuginea, it encloses the ovarian stroma. The wall of this ovary is made up of mitotically active germinal epithelial cells and they are said to be ugonial cells. They divide and then differentiate into haploid female sex cells which is said to be the ovum, singular ova is plural. Anyhow, the stroma is characterized by the presence of ovarian follicles at various stages of development, each containing a developing ovum. Well, children, this is a diagrammatic representation that we have projected here. See, when a transfer section of the ovary has been taken out, you can see the outermost covering is made up of the cuboidal epithelial cells, which you call it to be the germinal epithelium. Then there is presence of tunica albuginea, white fibrous connective tissue. And then there would be the layer stroma and then on the inner region, you say it is medulla, it's completely filled up with the network of the blood capillaries, lymph as well as the nerves. So what we are observing here is the primary follicle, a secondary follicle, then when this secondary follicle develops and has a follicular fluid filled cavity within it, it is almost at maturity. Then this matured ovarian follicle will be called the graphian follicle named after its discoverer, Regner D. Graf. Look at the spelling, it is double A-F-I-A-N. What happens? Simultaneously in both the ovaries, the graphian follicle would be formed first to come first. Whichever graphian follicle matures first, it will rupture and release the secondary oocyte. Actually, it is secondary oocyte which gets released and the process is said to be ovulation. But here, generally while speaking, we say it is ovum that is getting released. But actually, what is getting released, children? It is secondary oocyte. That release of the secondary oocyte is said to be as ovulation. Now, after this ovulation, the remnants of the graphian follicle, it becomes yellow-colored body and will be termed the corpus luteum. Now, this corpus luteum starts acting as an endocrine gland wherein it secretes a hormone called progesterone and this progesterone is said to be the pregnancy hormone. If a female is not conceived, she no longer requires this progesterone. So what happens? The corpus luteum will get degenerated into a white colored body and that's what is said to be corpus albicans. This degenerating process is said to be atriation. You can call this to be as atriation. So this is how the process within the ovary occurs. Well, children, the matured mammalian follicles are called graphian follicle. I've told you what corpus luteum is and what's corpus albicans. This is one part of the function that's performed by the ovary. So next, it acts as an endocrine gland. Which part of the ovary acts as an endocrine gland? Corpus luteum. And which is the hormone that is getting released there? Progesterone. Apart from this, the follicular cells which are present, they also help in releasing the hormone. The female sex hormone, estrogen, is being released by the follicle cells. Okay? Now, again, the slide which we have is the transverse section that has been taken and it is a permanent slide. Once again, we focus this, putting it into a cover under the microscope.
then see here the microscopic view of the transverse section of the ovary. Children, when you have a look at it, you will have to search for a graphene follicle within it. Immediately, you will get to know that it is a transverse section of the ovary which is depicting the graphene follicle. See, what we are observing here is the secondary oocyte. This is a portion enlarged. This is a secondary oocyte. Whereas here in these, we do not see the secondary oocyte. So, they are not the matured ovarian follicles. Okay. 